I want to talk about three items that would be right at home in any shop, whether it's a professional shop or a hobbyist shop or someone who's just thinking about setting up a shop. Three items that you're used to seeing in pro shops that you assume are just part of a professional approach to workmanship and craftsmanship, but have a place in any basement or garage or back porch shop or workbench. The first one of these is hand cleaner. I recommend economy of scale. You get it in a gallon jug, it's cheaper and it lasts longer and you're not gonna be afraid to use it. Now the thing about a professional hand cleaner, you know, this is a citrus type and it's got pumice in it and all those are reasons to use it. But any kind you buy is gonna get your hands clean right now. You usually have the option of either rinsing it off or wiping it off. It's rare that I run into something that this stuff won't cut. And of course, everybody thinks of it in the context of grease and oil. And if you're an auto, body, an auto mechanic, if you work on cars or small engines, you've already got it. Because it really takes grease off in a hurry. But it'll take other things off. It'll take off latex caulking. It'll take off paint before it gets hard. It'll take off all kinds of crud that soap just doesn't want to deal with. And it'll do it in a hurry. And it smells good. And, and, and I usually buy it at about a gallon at a time. It lasts me about a year. And it's really funny, I have, I have people in the shop, I have kids in the shop, and they get their hands dirty blacksmithing, and you can see when they're ready to go, they don't know what to do. And I'll say, you want some hand cleaner? And you can just see them kind of relax because they're gonna be able to get clean before they go home. The next item is closely related to the hand cleaner. Nitrile gloves. I have learned, probably, I began to learn this maybe 10 or 12 years ago, in a news article that I read, that my epidermis, my skin, is permeable. What that means is liquid will migrate through your skin, which means that acetone and solvents generally, sometimes, depending on the condition of your skin, can find a way in. And if it gets in, it ends up in your kidneys. And if it ends up in your kidneys, huh, let's avoid that if we can. So regardless of what kind of macho issues we may have about, I can lift that, I can use that tool, I'm not afraid to grab that and get my hand. Regardless of that, think again about the danger. Think again about the cumulative effect of chemicals on your organs and on your system. These will protect you from things that you really don't want to get on your skin. Whether it's chemical or organic or whatever it is, it enables you to think of your hands more as a tool and actually sort of make something happen and be more productive. And then what are you going to do? You're right in the middle of that. I mean, you've got grease on these things and they're really pretty well fouled and your phone rings or your granddaughter runs into the shop or a friend you haven't seen for years walks in, you want to shake hands, whammo. There's a sense of not only security but almost luxury to being able to throw that away and you know, interact in a civilized way with the people around you who aren't interested in having you part of their world if you've got that gunk all over your hands. So, Nitrile gloves are a huge plus that you can live without, but once you have them, you're gonna think, why didn't I spend $15 or whatever it would be for 100 of those things years ago? This next item is something that is common sense. <clears throat> you see them everywhere, but especially if you're just starting into sort of a workshop, workbench, craftsman, hobby or profession, you may not have made sure that you have this as part of your program. I've never needed any one of the five that I have in this shop. Although one time I took off at a run for where the closest one was and then the problem went away before I got there and thankfully before I needed it. There was one time, well here, here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a fire extinguisher. Is that boring? It's boring right up until you need one and don't have it. Or need one and have it and don't know where you put it. The one time that I was part of a, a situation where one was really needed, Nate and I were in a parking lot in Mesa, and he had a 67 Ford, I think, and it backfired and the carburetor ignited under the hood and raised the hood, and we were having a barbecue right then in the Lowe's parking lot. So Nate launched into Lowe's, they had one right around the corner of the contractor's ent entrance, boom, can I borrow your fire extinguisher? Bam, problem solved. Put the fire out, started the truck back up, drove home. When you're cutting timber during fire season, you got to carry a fire extinguisher. That counts, okay? That would count in your shop. Way better than nothing. You got a workbench, 
have that on your workbench. You've got gasoline at your workbench or in your garage. You might as well have a fire extinguisher. And think about that for a second. If you're working out of your garage and your hobby starts a fire, you're not just jeopardizing your hobby, you're jeopardizing your family's welfare. So they range from this to this. This is what, 30 bucks or something? To a little more serious application. Whatever you feel is appropriate, whatever you feel you can afford, whatever, whatever kind of gets you going about safety, don't overlook a fire extinguisher. There's a feeling of security and responsibility and competence that happens when you know that you're ready for just about anything that's liable to happen. So anyhow, those are three items. If you don't have them, put them on the list. You'll be glad you've got them.